pretty straightforward, right? B equals negative n d flux over dt. All of my answers were positive. Um, why didn't I have any negative answers? Anybody have any thoughts on that? So Emmanuel is asking, why didn't I have a negative answer choice? No, the real reason is they did not specify um, which direction things are in. So it's not um, it's not really specified, right? You can put your voltage one way or the other. They just drew it as V. They didn't draw which direction was which. So it doesn't matter. Exactly. And you're going to run into this on the exam. Don't let that bother you. Um, where they'll basically only ask for, they'll ask a question that you're used to giving a sign for. But really, the the question, the answer, the question doesn't provide you enough information to really specify the sign. So don't let that uh, bother you. So then, really, the only thing here we know the turns is five thousand, and then we're just going to take a very basic definition of this derivative by assuming a linear change, right? So from five to one in one millisecond, and then all of you got the answer. So that's good. Exactly, really. When you can't tell what direction it's in, all they can ask you for is the magnitude. <clears throat> and that's uh, quite common. Uh, don't, don't let that throw you off. Uh, apparently, also, this is actually how uh, fireplace igniters, barbecue pit lighters, and other automatic lighters operate, as shown in this figure 43.3. They use springs to initiate the physical movement of the magnet, rapidly changing the flux. Ignition coils use the same principle, but use a switch that removes the current quickly and collapses the magnetic field, thereby inducing the rapid change. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's talk a little bit about a uh, revolving field. So you can see here we have a... Um, a rectangular conductor inside um, a, a circular uh, magnet and the um, basically as the conductor changes in position with respect to the circular device uh, which you can see in, in the second uh, picture here you can move your conductor or you can move your magnet it doesn't matter the flux is the same uh, but basically all these machines, including DC machines, are inherently AC machines, but we uh, play with different things to make them behave certain ways. So this is a very high-level picture there. But what you will get, as you're looking at the voltage, uh, the induced voltage, because the rotation is, as you would expect, a uh, sinusoidal wave. So the induced voltage is a function of the rotation angle just going to look like a sinusoid and of course it also look like a sinusoid in time so here's a little bit more about the anatomy of a DC motor um, you can have a stationary uh, field machine so you basically have an elementary machine with a stationary field and the conductor is rotating you can have some sort of slip ring and brushes uh, that will help you make sure that the polarity is in the same direction. Basically, you have to have some sort of commutation of the DC output. And the use of the commutator and the brushes gives you a rectified sine wave or a very rough DC shape. Basically, now you'll have an average value instead of it being a perfect sinusoid. And there's some better pictures on uh, 43-6 of your uh, textbook. So when you use that split ring commutator, you're going to end up with this uh, rectified output. So basically you have some geometric construction uh, with some uh, brushes and a couple of different devices and you end up with a rectified output. 
and every DC motor has to have something to rectify the the uh, voltage. That's actually what makes it a DC motor. Really, most of the exam problems are going to be about the various parameters, but it's a good idea to just at least uh, if they show you a picture of, of a motor that you recognize, whether it's AC or DC. And this uh, commutator type setup is basically what makes it, uh, if you had to guess on a picture, what makes it DC, or if you have a rectified output. Um, AC motors don't have this, and we'll talk about that when we get to AC motors. Most of the problems are going to be probably where they give you some parameters in the problem, and then they ask you to calculate something using one of the couple of different models. Um, one important thing is calculating uh, the torque. So the torque is 52, 52 times the power in horsepower. So the torque in foot pounds force. So this LBF is pounds force. Pounds mass and pounds force are unrelated. Well, they're related by 32.2 feet per second squared, but uh, one measures force and one measures mass. So the torque in foot pounds force is 52, 52 times the horsepower divided by the uh, number of revolutions per minute. <clears throat> so that would be in customary. And in um, SI units, it'd be, uh, you know, the unit is Newton meter. So you just have to make sure your Newton meters cancel out. So in this case here, this example is 1,000 times the power in kilowatts. Uh, divided by uh, the mechanical uh, radians per second, the rotational frequency, or also uh, RPM, revolutions per minute, is a very popular unit, as is horsepower. Um, you can also write it as 9549 times the power in kilowatts divided by the revolutions per minute. And if you're not familiar with RPM, so if you write it out as one revolution per minute, you just think about how to multiply it to get to radians per second. So a revolution is 2 pi radians, right? So 2 pi radians per uh, one revolution, and then you convert minutes to seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds. All right, and you see you get revolutions cancel and minutes cancel, and you're left with one RPM is equal to 2 pi over 60 uh, radians per second. So if you see this 2 pi over 60, or if you see 60 over 2 pi, that's where it comes from. 